To start doing UV spectroscopy, you need a cuvette. Cuvettes can be made of plastic, optical glass, or quartz. The best cuvettes are quartz, and these are transparent into the UV down to about 190 or 200 nanometers. The most common cuvette you'll use in ACR is, is this size. It is called a semi-micro cuvette. Has a volume inside of about a milliliter. Also comes with a stopper so that you can easily seal the top and mix your contents or save it so that no solvent evaporates. Typically the first thing you do with your cuvette is to fill it with some clean solvent. In this case I'll use spectrophotometric grade ethanol. I'm putting in 0.95 milliliters which is the equivalent of 950 microliters. This is an actual spectrophotometer, a Genesis 10S. Inside this compartment is a contraption that can hold six cells, six cuvettes. Typically you will only have one cuvette so this is not necessarily useful for you as a beginner. You have to align the clear faces so that a light beam passing in this direction would go through the clear faces. The first task I need to do is to collect a baseline. You'll notice there's a B here and that is for baseline. So this is my cuvette with clean solvent in slot B. To turn on the spectrophotometer there's a switch in the back here. After going through uh, some initialization procedures this is called the smart start menu and in this case we want to do a UV scan. So when the appropriate choice is highlighted I will press this enter button and that takes me to a number of parameters. As a beginner the only things you would really change are these are, is the wavelength range. Where do you want to start and where do you want to stop scanning? To select the start wavelength I have to use these arrows here and I will press the enter button. Enter. And now it asks me what wavelength do I want to start scanning. So in this case I'll say 240 so I'm just using the number pad to say 240 and that's nanometers and I'll hit enter. I can similarly set the stop wavelength, use my arrow keys to highlight the choice, hit enter, type in a value, in this case I'll type in 300 nanometers, hit enter. It is set to scan the wavelengths between 240 and 300 nanometers. Once I have set my wavelength range appropriately, I will use this button here that says run test. So underneath the words there is an arrow and it's a button. The machine start makes making some noises and it automatically puts slot B in the light path. Here on the screen starts at 240 goes to 300 nanometers and there's an option to collect baseline. That's the first step. It is collecting baseline. You can see the percent completed over here. Alright, that's the baseline. When the machine collects a baseline, it's disregarding or it's canceling out the absorbance of the actual cuvette and the solvent you're using. So it pretends that the absorbance of this system is zero at every wavelength. And therefore when we put something in the ethanol we will only be measuring the absorbance of the solute, what was dissolved in the ethanol, not the ethanol itself, not the cuvette itself. So the machine has automatically put slot number one in the light path. So I will put my molecule in the cuvette, same cuvette I used to take the baseline, and then I'll put this cuvette with my molecule in slot number one. 
nearly always you'll be diluting your sample into a large volume of solvent. So in this case I have 950 microliters of ethanol. I will add 50 microliters of my solution here. This is a solution of vanillin. And that will be what is called a 20-fold dilution. 50 microliters into a final volume of a thousand is a factor of 20. And so 20-fold dilution. I'm pipetting directly into the ethanol. I know my sample has been delivered. And now I need to mix. If I don't mix it, sometimes my molecule ends up on the bottom of the cuvette and it's not measured accurately. So I need to make a homogeneous solution. So I put the cuvette into slot number one and I close the lid. I press measure sample. And I'm getting now a graph of absorbance on this y-axis versus wavelength on the x-axis. I have an interesting spectrum with one major peak here and it looks like there would be a peak at a lower wavelength and it looks like there would be a peak at a higher wavelength as well.